imposing is the wrong word. I think one can be descriptive about this. Uh, and in fact, one can do the kind of research that um, Professor Evans O'Hara has himself been doing, which is to say you can look at cultures which have encouraged debate and exchange and transfer and interruptions and arguing and all this sort of stuff. And you can see what has happened to them over 500 years. How do they cope with uh, increasing heterogeneity? How do they cope with the preser preservation of their own identity, but also with their evolution? It, it, it's the, it's the age-old problem of how to mm -hmm. preserve my identity and yet not get stuck. Yes. You have to preserve a, a nucleus where you are happy to say, this is I, this is me, this is my group. But there also has to be a sense of being open to that which is different, what can we learn from others, and so on. Um, and if you look at, if you compare these societies, and you find that some societies have not wished to ask such questions, or they have been closed to the outside world, such as the period that you mentioned in China after 1420 yes. something, whatever it was, um, um, then you see that, that the cultural life, cultural richness, richness, it begins to decline. You can simply show results of a certain sort of way of dealing with the other. Just as you can, you can treat translation, translation quality in the same way. You can say, here is, a, here is a translation which has these and these characteristics. Are my readers pleased? Do they work well? Do they, are they good translations? Well, people react, they don't really like them. They, they, they don't work. So you can, you can, you, you, it's not a question of imposing. For a, it's not the scholar's business to impose, I don't think. The scholar's okay, business is okay. to compare, to describe. If you develop this way, I predict that this is what's going to happen. If you develop that way, I predict that that's going to happen. The, the problem, I mean, it's a classic problem we face in describing translation quality for us. But when people do it in cultural studies, it gets a lot worse. When, for example, Germans describe their society as the pinnacle of civilization, because quality for them is the maximum degree of freedom that a system allows the individual. They're applying their definition of quality on everyone else. That, that is a conceptual imposition. There are many societies that would not see that as, as a definition of, of quality, as a, as, as a direction of what we're going. So we can argue about definitions of quality. Absolutely, and that's a very important argument to have. Or realize the plurality of possible answers. Yes. But one can also look at uh, the way in which possible answers influence the development of a culture over time. A wonderful case study would be Bhutan right now, which has uh, made a decision, or the king or, uh, has made a decision that uh, uh, economic progress or whatever shall not be the crucial measure of development in Bhutan, but there's going to be some kind of happy happiness measure, which of course <laughs> we all smile at. Also the Prime Minister of... The United Kingdom. No, well, yeah, okay, all right, all right, let's, okay. But I mean, um, in other words, if there's a whole culture that makes a decision that is going to, is going to rethink the notion of what is a better society, a better way of living, I think the scholar's uh, reaction would be, that's very interesting, let's see what happens. It's a kind of a living laboratory. Yes. We don't judge it now, we judge it in a hundred years' time or whatever, and we see what's happened. I don't know, attach where I want to get with that line of questioning is, should ethics concern our research? And Andrew is very descriptive. I would imagine he would say, no, I'll describe ethics. I cannot conceive of a theory of translation action without ethics. But I think there are descriptive ways of describing ethics. You can say, here is this society. It seems to have these and these ethical values. It prioritizes these kinds of ideas about quality or goodness or the good life. Okay, that's a descriptive view of ethics. And then I can say, here's another society which has a very different concept of what is the good life. Let us see how they have developed. Let us see what happens to them. Let us uh, try out lots and lots of different criteria. How do they treat the sick? How do they treat the elderly? How do they treat the rich? What kind of education system do they have? Uh, what kind of taxes do they have? Well, I can ask a million questions across these, uh, comparing these different societies, and you can let the reader come to conclusion. You, of course, can come to your own conclusion as well. But you can include ethics without being prescriptive. You can include Ooh. ethics descriptively. Ooh. I think I think that's the way we have to go. Okay. <laughs> Didn't like your size of despair there. Can, can we... <laughs>
No, you assume the researcher is external to the thing being researched. No, no, no I don't. That's no, no, I possible don't. If somebody else can come in and disagree, that's fine, then we'll talk about it. Uh, I have no idea what ethics is, uh, as a matter of fact. I know, I know there are books, I, I want in my undergraduate studies, I, I studied philosophy, I, uh, I had courses in ethics, I understand the notion, uh, I suppose that uh, we researchers uh, adopt ethical attitudes whether we like it or not because we simply accept some sort of ethical consensus in uh, our society. But what, does, what disturbs you? Yes, I would like to know... What disturbs why, me? Yes, yes. Why, right. why have you raised the question? Why is it important? I'm interested important if, if in question? choosing to study cross-cultural relations, yes. we have, as if it were by the act of choosing that, object of study, ah, okay. a commitment to dialogue with cultural others. Or not. And I'm interested because our discipline is living with yes. a decision to boycott a cultural other, to, to, to try to solve a, a problem by not talking with a well, cultural some, other. Some and I'm wondering if there's some contradiction between that kind of ethics, yes. boycott, and the ethics of dialogue which is embedded somehow within our object of study. That's what's tormenting me. We study cross-cultural relations or we study intercultural relations not always motivated by the will or the wish to bridge between societies. I can imagine that many scholars are not interested in bridging, bridging between cultures. Many scholars would work in the service of certain cultural premises that would like to block other cultures. They study the other culture in order to block it, as I said before about translation. Well, most of the scholars we read pretend to be interested in bringing cultures together, but you cannot avoid observing that many features that they find in some other cultures are not to their liking at all. So they wouldn't like, you wouldn't like, for instance, suppose according to the norms prevalent in your culture and according to the ethics you believe are prevalent in, your, in Western culture, you wouldn't like a culture that where women are, and children are cruelly beaten because interfere with your own culture. They, you wouldn't like these features to to migrate from another culture to your own culture. No, but I would like country. to talk with those people. <clears throat> yes, sure. but if you cannot talk with those people, you are looking for strategies to block those features. Yes? Now, the whole world is not satisfied with many features of American culture. You know, what is identified as American culture, sometimes under the misguiding title of globalization. For instance, people are very critical of American fast food in many countries because of obesity, because the, the number of obese children grows in certain countries, now one child out of four is obese, already at the age of six or seven. So what you have to do is learn about fast food, learn about McDonaldism, <laughs> yes, or some sort of things, and then you try to block them. You have, you have many, many instances where studying the other is not in order to negotiate with the other or create some sort of dialogue with the other, but in order to protect yourself from the other. I'm not saying that this is the main major current or that uh, you cannot find both currents living together. It is not contradictory that a scholar should do both things. I don't think that the boycott that you're referring to is cultural at all. It's a political boycott. Uh, it's an attempt to, to have an effect on the Israeli foreign policy. Um, 
Some people have joined it, some people haven't. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a cultural issue. But talking with or not talking with, whatever you want to call it. But it's, it, it's not a cultural issue, it's a political issue. Talking is very cultural. Talking is cultural, yes, but uh, one, yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I have not joined it um, um, and said publicly why, but um, I think it's a political issue. It's, it's uh, a way of, uh, a way, which may or may not be valid. Some people think it's valid, other people think it's not valid. A way of trying to change Israeli foreign policy. You don't see any relation between that and what we do in research? There's no... Um, I, I don't think it's a research issue. Okay. I mean, you can research it, of mm, course. No, uh, no. Indeed, <laughs> but I don't think... Uh, I mean, I can uh, say, for example, that um, I don't eat ostriches. Ostriches. Uh, but I don't think... In other words, I boycott the eating of ostriches. I do not eat ostriches, I could say. Um, but I don't think that has anything to do with whether or not um, I study this or that in translation studies. It's not a re research issue. It's an issue of personal ethics rather than professional ethics. It's a very poor comparison. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what sh I asked, sort of asking about what we discovered in the past 10 or 15 years. What should we try to discover in the next 10 or 15 years? Do you have any idea at all? Um, can think of so many things because um, Last year I had a seminar with my students, advanced students, and uh, the topic of the seminar was what our agenda, what is our agenda? Yeah, that's my question. Every, every single discipline has some sort of agenda. In the so-called hard disciplines, uh, they have an international competition, for instance, if uh, departments of physics, if the subject of uh, superconductivity becomes the most important item on the agenda of physics, then everyone works on superconductivity. There is a competition. In the humanities and the social sciences, we don't really see this kind of heat. But uh, my question to my student was, what should be the agenda, not international agenda of all disciplines of science at large. What should be the agenda of cultural research, not cultural studies? Cultural research, the way we, we think about it. And uh, we discussed it a uh, whole semester. And actually they came up with many interesting suggestions and formulations about what they consider to be more important. What should be the goals of our endeavors? Should we invest more energy in studying this perspective or in studying the other perspective? And finally, they drafted a document which uh, we discussed uh, among us, the faculty of the unit of cultural research where I belong, and uh, we accepted much of their uh, proposals as our manifesto or as our own description. But that has been very helpful because we wanted to see how much they grasped from what we have been trying to tell them. Could you give some examples? Uh, now, uh, they devised five major areas in cultural research. I'm happy, I'm, I'm sorry I, I don't have the document with you, I don't remember it by heart, but uh, they, they suggested to divide the, um, the subject matter of our research into five major topics or five major uh, meta areas or, or categories, if you like. I simply don't like the word categories, so I try to avoid it. Uh, perspectives, maybe, should be a better word. Um, studying, for instance, uh, dynamics of culture including intercultural relations, change and developments, uh, <laughs> center-periphery relations, agency, day, uh, daily in interaction between uh, the in society, 
socio-cultural interaction, and so on and so on. And then they devise some 20 hot topics. Yes? 20 so is about 18 too many, surely. Yes, yes, but you see 18 are not ultra or ah. major <laughs> categories, but, but niches, uh, small derivatives of the major topics. That's helpful because, for instance, people who are sitting here would like to know what are our possibilities, what can we research, what would be valuable to do research about. And uh, if you give the people five major topics, that's not enough. They want to see how they translate into something more concrete. Okay. So that, that has been very helpful and I think it can be done for any so-called discipline. I consider cultural research a discipline I'm not sure whether translation studies is a discipline. You see, that's the, that's the source of trouble. It's an area of studies. It's not a discipline. It, oh, it's not a discipline yes. in the sense that it does not create its own mechanism or uh, whatnot. Let me not go into it. Yeah, because matter. that would All start right, yeah. a new discussion. This is not going to work. Time is late. Andrew. What should we be working on? I, I think that the, the one key thing, with, if, if, you, if translation studies is within cultural studies or cultural research, which is a fine place to put it, that's fine. Yes, that's the I problem. agree. It's, it's one mode of, of looking at cultural exchange and so on. I, it seems to me that the key point is not whether there is a big difference between intercultural interaction and intracultural interaction, which is Anthony, what your question seemed to yes. wonder about. Whether, whether uh, yeah. it seems to me that it, that's not the point. I would say that the point is more bigger to do with how do groups call them cultures, if you like, but maybe that's a too big a word. How do groups uh, manage? difference yes. uh, within themselves or between themselves and others. What are the different ways in which they do this and what are the effects of these different ways of managing difference? Um, this means how, who is the decisions about who, who do you treat as other, whether it's within the same society or culture or outside it. How do you, how do you meet or talk to the other? Um, what methods do you use to communicate, or do you use any methods? Uh, do you use translation? Do you learn the other language? Do you simply turn your back? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? But this is not between holistic national cultures. This is a much wider issue, a much wider issue dealing with any kind of group. Um, families even. Families have different customs. How do you deal with the family next door who refuses to turn the radio off at half past ten at night or something, they have a different custom. I mean, it goes right down to micro levels. Yes. And it seems to me that um, the kind of approach that I would advocate would be the one I mentioned a few minutes ago, which is that one looks at the different solutions which are used to cope with difference, and one tries to evaluate what their effect is, the long-term effect. And from this, we may all learn what are good ways to deal with difference and what are bad ways to deal with difference. Um, of all the differences that we have to deal with, I think at the, in the, at the moment in the 21st century, the key problem is how do we, how do we negotiate difference when the other is a fundamentalist of some kind or other who simply refuses to negotiate and believes that they have the whole truth of X, and this is a non-negotiable truth. Um, it seems to me that uh, you can find such people not only within the religious world, but you can find them in economics or anywhere where people simply hang on to a dogma and they will refuse to accept that any kind of questioning or criticism is possible. And as soon as there are people in that position, it seems to me that they are it's very difficult to see how you can meet with them, how you can talk to them. I mean, how do you bridge the gap? What is the best way to cope with this situation? Now, that seems to me the kind of problem that you were hinting at at the very beginning, yeah, sure. when you said that you thought that this was as big a problem as climate change. Yes. 